Good morning. I'd like to welcome each of you to the Montana Alternative Student Testing Pilot uh, Session 1, Professional Development. I am Julie Mergel. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the Montana Office of Public Instruction. And we really welcome each and every one of you. Please note that we will be recording this session um, and that there is a sign in link in the chat box that we want to be sure all of you do sign in. Uh, we'd like to welcome to you today two of our great partners, um, New Meridian Hello. and AAI, who uh, runs our Kite platform. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Courtney to get us started on our session. So thank you. And uh, please uh, feel free to use your chat feature if you have questions to be uh, placing them in the box. Good morning, everybody. And again, I'm very appreciative to uh, to be working with such a great uh, organization such as OPI in the state of Montana, and also equally as uh, excited to be working with our uh, our partner our partner ATS. And so, and thank you for for allowing us the time to present uh, what our pilot is, and of course, what those next steps is going to mean for uh, for all of you in the field. So we're going to go ahead and get kick started, get started off, and uh, with our next slide. Again, just to welcome, we're very excited to work with you on the pilot. What we are going to be covering uh, throughout this, uh, this presentation is going to be just some basic information, like what you need to know, what the contract coverage is going to look like. We're going to go over some of the administration dates, some of the accommodations offered both uh, throughout the tool and also offline out of the tool, um, some reporting timelines, and then I'm going to turn it over to our partner to introduce the Kite system and platform. And then we're going to circle back with some key takeaways and some additional contact information so that in case there are any additional questions that you don't have the opportunity to ask today or that maybe come up after you have uh, you know, completed the training or listened to the recording, et cetera, that you have that access to the proper support uh, information and uh, contact uh, people. So what we need to know for the pilot <clears throat> is that uh, the OPI is actually going to be providing the roster information on behalf uh, to New Meridian and to our uh, ATS partner. So there's not going to necessarily need to be a lot of action uh, needed from you. We are, are, are still working through what some of those details are going to look like, but we did hear that and understand that, you know, rostering tends to be a heavy lift. And so we want to be able to reduce the burden uh, to those of you who are actually administering the pilot. So just wanted to make that clear that uh, roster information will be handled um, between the, uh, the state and our ATS partner. There are also four two-week administrations throughout the year. Um, those administrations, um, I believe, are actually going to be two weeks in intervals, and we'll actually cover what those dates are a little bit later, but just wanted to let you know again that there are, two, uh, that there are four two-week administrations. Each administration will include three math testlets and two ELA testlets. So what that means, and, and the design is very specific, in which uh, the testlets can be split with three testlets. They can be split across three different classroom settings, or they can be stacked into one and will align into one single classroom session. Similarly, for the our ELA, we have two ELA testlets, which comprises of uh, two passage sets per testlet, so four passage sets uh, per uh, the entire testlet system for the November administration. And again, that is uh, designed to where to allow the flexibility for our educators in our field to be able to uh, continue to uh, spread those across two different classroom sessions or again, to be able to stack them into one. For these particular testlets, we are including multiple choice items as well as technology enhanced items. Uh, these were developed in collaboration with Montana educators this summer. There are no constructed response items for this year. So I just wanted to make sure that, that everybody knows uh, that we are, are going to be providing a tutorial for the, for the Kite platform that will be available a little bit later and is linked later in this uh, training session as well. What that tutorial will do is actually just walk you through the item types. And so for those of you who might not be as familiar with technology enhanced items, et cetera, you'll really get to play with what those item types look like so that your students are best prepared and so that, you're, and so that the educators are best prepared to handle any kind of questions that come up as well. Additionally, we're going to be offering individual student reports uh, that will contain raw score data. And those will be a little, available a little bit later and we'll talk about some of the timing for that as well. 
the next, uh, in our next slide, we actually refer to uh, what our math strands are. So the way this is actually uh, divided out is you'll see different color codes. So the purple, for example, are going to be our grade five math strands. That is what is available in the November administration. What we have in the red is going to be available and it is going to be what is tested on and the content that's going to be tested on within the January administration, so on and so forth. The darker navy blue is going to be what is tested and assessed within the um, March administration. And the maroon uh, color is going to be what is assessed during our final April administration. We have this divided out for all of our math strands. Uh, our next one is grade seven. Again, grade seven for uh, the first portion, um, we're going to be covering what we indicate here in the purple at, in the November administration. Red is the January, the Navy is the March, and the maroon is the April. We did develop these uh, this content to be uh, as much aligned to the it, what we traditionally see in beginning of year and end of year. So if there are any questions about content or anything else, we're happy to, uh, to answer any questions and we can definitely field that. Additionally, we will um, provide an additional contact information for any questions that you have about our math or our ELA, which will be covered in the next slide. So for ELA, um, it's a little bit different here. So whereas with math, we typically align, you know, and try to do first of year, end of year, uh, ELA is traditionally designed to where uh, we're looking at the complexity levels of passages and how they progress through the year. So if you notice what you see in the uh, purple, we have a readily accessible literary text. Next, we're going to move into the January administration with a moderately complex. So we're going to be uh, advancing the complexity levels of this, uh, this literary and information, informational text with each administration. However, where I do want to pause and, and circle back, we are actually doing a revisit for our uh, March administration for ELA in particular. And this is just to revisit, a, a, again, a very readily accessible uh, liter literary text and an informational text. And that is just to help us maintain and understand and measure growth through the assessment to ensure that we have adequate coverage and to help build our design plans and inform them in the future. And then again, we circle back uh, at the very end with our final uh, April administration with a moderately high complex uh, literary text and an informational text. The same can be said for our grade seven coverage. It follows the exact same pattern that in which we start with a readily accessible, uh, move on to moderate complex and then go back to a revisit uh, just to again, measure that progress. And then we end out the, the year in April with the moderately highly complex uh, literary text and informational text. As I mentioned uh, in the previous slides as well, um, these are the current administrations um, as slated. So we have the November 7th through 18th uh, coming up this year. So just in a few weeks, and that um, is going to be open uh, to our, you know, to you all to be able to administer to your students. As I mentioned before, um, you have the opportunity for those of you who are testing in math, for example, or assessing in math, for example, to be able to split those testlets into three classroom chunks um, or settings, or you may be able to stack them all into one. Same for ELA, there's only two um, testlets, but you may be able to stack them into one session or spread them across two. We also have worked with OPI to, de to determine the January administration, and that is January 17th through the 30th of 2023. April and or the March and April administrations are still uh, to be determined. We are working with collaboration with our partners just to ensure that, you know, the we are reducing the burden of additional testing to the field and making sure that we can uh, allow for the most flexibility and, and allow for the most time for our OPI and for our state participants. So those uh, administrations will be published and available on the mass site as soon as those uh, those actual administrations are agreed upon and announced. As covered before, there are three math testlets per administration, two, uh, per, two ELA testlets per administrations. And again, administered to provide the most flexibility individually or grouped together. Um, and again, we designed the, uh, the, 
the timing such that it, it can be conducive and, and not take away from the classroom time. We understand that this, this education time and this classroom time is absolutely critical uh, to you and to your students. And so therefore we wanted to make sure that we could definitely fit uh, these into a, a single classroom session uh, if needed and, and be able to, to work with you. And that is part of the design as well, just to ensure that we're testing you know, throughout the year to ensure that you know, we're able to measure progress to ensure that we're able to, um, you know, make sure that that the students are heard and there's accurate report, reporting coming back in a more timely manner. And again, to allow for as much classroom uh, instruction time as possible and reduce the amount of test burden on your students and the teachers. So the next slide I wanted to cover is just goes over some of our reportings. So our uh, reporting was actually going to be available um, within about 10 business days at the close of the administration window. So once that administration window closes on the 18th, um, we are gonna be uh, working behind the scenes to get that uh, material and data analyzed and back and we will be providing uh, student reports or rather a partner will be providing student reports back uh, within their portal system that they will be covering later. Just for reference, these reports will contain for this pilot, the content standards that the item is measuring. There will be a brief description of the standard and an indication of if the student received full or partial credit for that item. Okay. For accommodations and tools, we heard, you, we heard uh, the field and we wanted to be very cognizant that we do have kiddos that have uh, various different accommodations that are required through either 504 or uh, IEPs, et cetera. And so for that, we are actually providing a Spanish testlet uh, as well as an English testlet. This is just for math for the Spanish. So I wanted to be very clear with, a, uh, with the ELA that would actually uh, undermine the purpose of the ELA exam. So we do have Spanish available for both math and, uh, or excuse me, Spanish and English for avail available for math and traditional uh, English for our ELA testing. In addition to that, knowing that there might be some students who still struggle, um, we do wanna provide as much support as we can to our ELL students and our Spanish speaking population as well. So therefore, even though the um, ELA test is only available in English, we are providing a paper printout version of Spanish directions to, to give the, the best possible opportunity and testing experience for our students. There are going to be principal papers, again, in both math and ELA, and there will be uh, English and Spanish versions, again, Spanish just for the math. Um, additionally, there are some alternative color schemes um, for our enhanced uh, contrast. There is some additional tools as well, and those are text-to-speech, uh, online and English forms only. Zoom magnification of the screen up to five times. Highlighter, bookmark, notes, pointers, strikers, calculator, um, specific to the math forms only, um, and a test and pause resume. I did wanna mention here that these tests are not actually timed. Um, so there are some accommodations we realize that actually go into extended time, time and a half, et cetera, because of the way we design this program and we are not actually timing these particular testlets. Um, we uh, recognize that outside uh, of the tools that anyone who is administering to the students do have that flexibility to allow for additional and extended time without fear of being uh, you know, picked out or in the session being timed out, et cetera. So I want to pause there and see um, if there are, oh, is anyone there? Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I got picked out of my PC, so my apologies. I wanted to pause there and uh, turn the uh, training actually over to our partner, who's going to walk everybody through the Kite platform. And at that, uh, Charles, very uh, happy to introduce you and I'll let you go ahead and take over from here. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Charles Turner and I'm uh, with the Kite Service Desk and I'll allow everybody else to introduce themselves as well. And I'm Catherine Kosen and I'm on the Service Desk. And I'm Brad Hanson, I'm also on the Service Desk as well. 
and Joseph Kenny is also here, but I believe he cannot unmute. So we're going to go ahead and carry on. Um, thank you very much, Courtney, for going through that. And uh, thank you um, again, everybody, for joining us. We're so happy to to be here and to be able to uh, partner for such a great opportunity. Um, so today in our agenda, we're going to cover a kite overview, the uh, kite educator portal, kite student portal, uh, how to install the kite student portal, as well as some basic troubleshooting um, that comes along with things that you may see within student portal or errors that you uh, may uh, see when you go to install kite student portal. So first we'll cover the kite overview. Uh, the AT, ATS team is primarily located in Lawrence, Kansas. Our team includes developers, operations, database administrators, quality assurance, test operations, and service desk personnel. We are a customer focused organization continuing to push ourselves to deliver high quality software on time uh, for the 2023 uh, or for the 2021-22 school year over 84 percent of educators gave our team an overall customer customer satisfaction rating out of uh, five out of five and 10 percent gave us a score of four out of five uh, the kite architecture uh, uh, it, the kite architecture is hosted in uh, Amazon Web Service, or from, or more globally known as AWS, uh, it, uh, it allows for improved availability, scalability, and security. Uh, we are based in the Ohio region across multiple data center locations, all data restricted to the US data centers. Uh, Kite uses the secure by design. Uh, the ATS security process and kite security implementation are implemented to protect confidentiality of sensitive kite data, to protect the integrity of the kite data, to maintain the availability of our kite systems. So now we'll take a look at the kite suite and we have a video that we'd like to show you. With continued effort to improve student learning through educational assessment, students soar with KITE. From formative instruction to high-stakes summative, teachers measure progress throughout the year, districts track data to drive objectives, and anyone can use survey and observation tools. The KITE Suite is an all-in-one solution with tools for creating innovative content, streamlined student data management, a dynamic, accessible, and secure testing environment for students, and robust data collection and reporting to support your diverse educational, research, and policy needs. KITE is an assessment product suite, providing you tools to effectively engage and assess a range of students' abilities. KITE consists of five applications. Content Portal, a virtual pantheon of content building tools with a growing portfolio of engaging technology enhanced items and simulations designed for enterprise scale as well as the classroom teacher. Educator Portal, a secure and enjoyable environment where educators monitor and update assessment and student data, customize formative tools, and use data to guide instruction. Student Portal, intuitive, a place where learners feel success find engaging graphics, and thrive with an easy-to-use interface. Parent Portal, a place of engagement. Parents invest in their students' growth with access to year-over-year -year results. And Survey Solutions, an auxiliary survey tool for use in the classroom to inform district policy and gather feedback or reliable observation data. Accessibility and Accommodations, data integrity and stability, security and confidentiality. The Kite Suite checks the boxes for what you've come to expect. Where Kite excels is in our business model, 
focusing on our diverse public and private partners, bringing their ideas to fruition through iterative design and continual enhancement. As leaders in developing technology solutions, we proudly ensure our product has everything you need to successfully deliver assessments and gather the data needed to help students succeed. Give us a call. Find out how Kite can benefit your organization's growth and assessment needs. Our Kite team is ready to help you soar to new heights. All right, and that was an overview of kind of us at ATS and uh, our complete offerings for Kite. We know that there are some products that we do have that will not be used for the pilot, but we wanted to make sure to give a, a good picture of who we are and, and things that we do offer. So our system is a comprehensive assessment system uh, designed to support content development, educator management of students, and delivery of assessments through a secure web-based web system. We are continuing to expand our offerings annually, developing new functionality to support the needs of our clients. Today, we are focusing on providing a high-level overview of our system. We will go into far more detail at our second training session. Kite Educator Portal. Here's the landing page for the Kite Educator Portal. At the top right, it displays what role, you, role organization, and assessment program you're currently assigned. Uh, the right-hand side of the page quickly uh, has quick links to the uh, more common areas users work in, as well as the links that go uh, to the profile where information such as display name and password can be updated. Educator Portal uses tabs to navigate to each page. Uh, some of the functions, uh, Kite Educator Portal is used by educators uh, for entering student accommodations, monitoring test sessions, uh, scoring extended responses, and retrieving student and class data through data extracts. Many of the reports and data extracts may be saved so they can be viewed and printed in the future. Kite Educator Portal supports all required accessibility accommodation needs that comply with, sec with Section 508, as well as uh, Web Content uh, Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG 2.0 Guidelines. And now I'll hand it over to Brad to cover the student portal. Thanks, Charles. Yep, I'll be going over student portal next. So going over about Kite Student Portal, um, students engage in online testing through the Kite Student Portal, uh, which supports all required accessibility and accommodation needs. Student Portal is available through both the uh, browser and secure kiosk mode. Uh, for desktops, laptops, and iPads, uh, the client is based on the Safe Exam browser software. Uh, which temporarily turns the computer into a secure workstation that prevents the computer resources like other websites, applications that are unauthorized during the testing. For Chromebooks, uh, the Kite application leverages security features native to those devices to provide the same restriction to unauthorized resources. Uh, student Portal is designed to use bandwidth efficiently and the responses from the students are transmitted to the Kite servers as they are answered. Uh, this approach uh, minimizes bandwidth needs for all the schools and districts, uh, and Student Portal is capable of preserving student responses during the interruptions caused by power and network loss, uh, and sending those responses once the power or the network is restored. Moving on to the next slide. This is the landing page of Student Portal. Uh, the test administrators will use the student login inf information that's obtained from Educator Portal, and they'll enter it here. Uh, us users will need to select the Close Kite button in order to exit application for Windows, Mac, and iPad devices. Uh, and this is an example of the main testing window when students take a test. The navigation bar is at the top of the screen for each item. 
The toolbox is to the left of the screen and students can locate a help icon and a flag on the upper right screen, which they can use to mark a question for review before finishing the test. Uh, we'll go through all of these tools and navigation in more detail in session two. Next, uh, we have a link for our web version of Student Portal, uh, which is used for practice tests. Um, this is available for your students today, and we would also recommend you have your students interact with the practice test after installing the client. Next, we'll move on to the Kite Student Portal install. Uh, before I move on, are there any questions? There are a few questions in the Q&A um, box. Okay. Asking about supports available. So the question will be, what will your supports for Braille be during the pilot? And we'll let Courtney answer that. Can you hear me okay? Can, can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So for Braille supports for this year, they're not actually supported for Braille uh, this year, just because the, the the timing and also because of the, uh, the smaller scale um, uh, of the pilot and the nature of the pilot. However, if that is something that the state would like to include for later, uh, that's something we can definitely discuss. But at, at this juncture for this year, uh, Braille is not an offering, but we do, however, have the paper version available. Courtney, there's also a question asking about um, German speaking um, accommodations. It's in the answered section of the Q&A. Oh, okay. Um, we, it says, yes, we do have the test written for Spanish. Um, we do not, we're not presently uh, planning for German speaking students. Um, again, if that is something that, you know, that our um, partner, that our OPI partner would like to include for future, uh, future administration years, and that's something we de can definitely incorporate and can definitely plan for. For this year, we had just planned um, on English and Spanish for the small scale pilot. And then we have, it looks like we have one more other question. Do we need to install Student Portal? Yes, you do um, for all the devices, yep. All right, so if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and move on to the Kite Student Portal install section. Um, this is our current list of supported operating systems. Um, you can see you have Chrome OS, iPad, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, as the, uh, updates are released for the operating systems, we work quickly verifying things to work as they should and have them added to the list as soon as they check out. So this isn't a um, set list for the school year. And for the 22 and 2023 school year, the student, Kite Student Portal is currently on version 10.0. Moving on to the installers, the install for Chromebooks is still to be determined. Um, for iPads, the Tesla Kite Student Portal is available in the App Store to be downloaded. Uh, the app can be installed individually or pushed to the devices with MDM software. For the Mac install, it's available as a DMG and it can be installed individually or pushed to the devices. Windows install is available as an .exe or an .msi and it can be installed individually or pushed to the devices as well. Next, we have our install links here. Uh, this is a list of current installation links available for the Tesla Kite Student Portal application. And we do have the install guides for these as well. The next slide we have are our whitelisting URLs. Uh, this is a list of sites that the technology director or the IT team will want to ensure are whitelisted. Next comes the troubleshooting, which I will hand off to Catherine. 
Hello, good morning. So I'll be going over some troubleshooting in this next section um, to cover some common errors that can be encountered and the appropriate resolutions for them. Uh, you may see a certificate error. This error states uh, uses an invalid security certificate and this ca is caused by uh, SSL inspection uh, decryption. To resolve this issue, you will want to add the URLs from the whitelisting document to allow the information to pass through this process untouched. On Windows devices, you may see a kite fail to start a new session. Please consult log files for more information or a failed to initialize the kite service. The kite will now terminate since the service is configured to be mandatory. This is caused when the app services are not running and or are not set to automatic with the startup. To resolve this issue, you will need to open the task manager and use the services tab to ensure that the service or student portal are running and set to automatic. If the issue does continue, you will want to uninstall the app, removing all the app data files and then reinstall on the device. Uh, the specific steps for this will be found in the Windows installation guide. In very rare cases, the Windows reboot um, or power options with the start menu do not uh, properly display after exiting the uh, Kite Student Portal software with a hard reboot. To resolve this issue, there is a file in the C drive that would need to be run as an administrator and the exact steps to follow to resolve this um, are also found in the installation guide for Windows. On Chromebooks, you may get a black screen that says something went wrong while displaying the Kite student portal. This is caused because the Chromebook cannot connect to the Kite server. And to resolve this issue, make sure that the Chromebook has a strong internet connection, ensure the whitelisting has been done, and verify that the URL within the application has not been changed. The loading message uh, that would appear in the student portal is caused because there is a bandwidth or a connection issue. Usually this resolves itself when the connection has been reestablished or the process of downloading um, uploading is complete. If the message does not go away, exit the test and reboot the device, verify that there is a strong connection and then you should be able to proceed with testing um, and pick up right where uh, the student had left off. And the red screen that cannot be exited except with the quit password. This screen can happen on Mac, PC, and iPads. And this would appear when the student portal application was shut down or closed improperly. To get out of this red screen, you would need to enter the quit password. And to avoid getting the red screen um, for the student portal, it would need to be closed using the closed kite button every time. Uh, please note the quit password is not in any manual or on um, any site, and this is for security reasons, so uh, the quit password would need to be requested from the Kite Service Desk. And we wanted to take a pause here and ask if there are any questions. You can either raise your hand to ask your question out loud, or you can put them in the Q&A box. How do we find the links? Sam, do you want to share in the chat box the links to our web page and take our folks over there to see that so they can actually see where these links are located in documents, please? Yep. So I just shared a link to our website. Um, let me share my screen with you all. One moment. So on the mass web page, which you can get to from the home page, I believe it is under leadership, and then the mass link is here once you get there. Um, the recording of this training will be here once 
the training is over. Here's the slide deck that you're looking at now. Here's a tip sheet that we made to help with the or with the whole process. And then here are all the install guides from um, AAI. So you can just press these links and it'll take you to the install guides. <clears throat> so I see another question. I'm just gonna read it out loud. Montana is a local control state and not all districts administer the same subject matter at the same time of year. Will there be any flexibility to administer different testlets at different times for the pilot or in the future? So I wanna start with uh, answering for, for pilot uh, purposes. For this year for the pilot, there is a prescribed or a very specific uh, order in which the, the content is presented within the testlets. Now, the purpose of this is to ensure that we get enough coverage and we get enough answers from our students to be able to develop a full testlet system in the future that will allow for that flexibility for teachers to be able to select the scope and sequence of which uh, they administer this te the, the testlets in the future. But for this year in particular, they are a very prescribed uh, set sequence. Jeff Cruz asks or says, when I tried to install the Chrome app by ID from the admin panel, it could not be found. Does someone want to take that question from AAI? I think me? Charles was answering. Uh, now we can hear you, Charles. Yeah, sorry, my mic was up on my headset. Um, yes, so uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, my immediate assumption is probably that it probably just hasn't propagated through Google yet to be fully available. So we, we'll double check that and um, make sure that that is in fact the case and see if we can get that expedited. Yeah, so um, to kind of build off of that a little bit more, I wanted to provide the uh, the Kite Service Desk uh, phone number as well as how you can reach us via email. Um, as Sam showed, the full install guides uh, for each device also contains the download links. Um, and it also will cover some of the troubleshooting steps that Catherine uh, covered today, as well as um, some smaller tips and tricks. But again, if you have any questions regarding any of this process, uh, do not hesitate to give us a call. Um, that's what we're here for. And we are always happy to help out. Um, and then we also look forward to going through the details of um, educator portal and student portal more in depth with you in session two. Um, and Good we're... afternoon, and thank you for joining us this, um, this afternoon for the test coordinator training. It is uh, getting to the end of the school year for us, so I appreciate you taking your time out of your day. We only have one more uh, training. Charles, are you still there? Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on there, but. This phone number and um, email are also on that web page that I just had Perfect. up in the chat. And then Charles, if you don't mind advancing to the next slide too, I wanted to cover um, our contact information is also provided. So there is a specific email address that is set up to go to New Meridian. Uh, and that is the OPI pilot at newmeridiancorp.org. That is uh, the best way to reach out to anyone at New Meridian. So whereas you'd reach out to um, the, the kite support and the, uh, the email and the phone number for any kind of technology questions or any uh, troubleshooting, but for anything uh, regarding you know, policy or, um, or actual product or content related questions, uh, you would reach out to this OPI pilot at numeridiancorp.org. And we just want to make sure that you are the most successful and we can definitely uh, address any question that comes in as quickly as possible. So I just wanted to call out that there are some different 
uh, avenues to be able to contact us and that, you know, we to allow us to be able to get back to you quickly and efficiently. Courtney, we also want to, uh, Sam is dropping into the chat box, also a link to the Kite platform for them to kind of see what it looks like before the next training. So um, this is also located on their tip sheet, but uh, for our, our users, certainly you can go in and kind of check out the platform yourself um, so that you can kind of see it uh, uh, as we go deep into it in session two. So thanks, Sam, for popping that in there. And I just wanted to wrap this up with a final few key takeaways. So we discussed the, the, the purpose of the pilot. And of course, we covered the content and kind of future state of what the test is going to be. Um, there's some administration details. And again, that student tutorial. Thank you, Sam, very much for being able to, to, to drop all this information to the chat and also post it on the website as appropriate. Um, and again, where to find some of those installation guides. So again, thank you very much uh, to you, Sam, um, for being able to provide that. Again, we follow up, uh, you know, our platform partner and technology partner has already provided their information. We have our contact information listed down here as well. And I believe that will also be on the, the website as well. And um, I, because of my, my device, I cannot see if there are any other questions that came in, but Sam, I'm going to pause here and defer to you to see if there's anything else that we can help address. Yeah, if you wanna ask, a question you can either put it in the Q&A or raise your hand and I will unmute you so you can ask it. And there are no questions currently, but we'll wait a minute and see if some come in. So this, um, the recording of this presentation is going to be on the website, just basically at the top. Um, I'll drop that into the chat again, and you can find it by going to opi.mt.gov, going to leadership, and then the MAST page, or you can just search MAST on the website and find it. Um, but I'll put the link in the chat, and this recording will go up shortly after the training is over. And Sam, did you want to cover the additional times uh, that were this session is being provided as well, uh, just in case anyone wants the opportunity to catch up or attend a live session who's maybe listening to the recording after the fact? I'm muted. Sorry, I was muted. We'll have this session again today at 3.30. The link will be the same, or you can grab the link from the website or from your email. There's lots of ways that you might be able to find the link. Um, we will also have this session again on the 26th. Um, that day we'll have session one and session two running concurrently. And then we will have session two on the 27th. And all the times are the same. So on the 26th, again, it'll be at 9.30 and 3.30. And the 27th, 9.30 and 3.30. Um, and the links are on the website. Thank you, I don't see any more questions coming in and no one is raising their hand. No. Well, before we close out then, I just, again, wanna reiterate how excited we are to work uh, with such a great state with Montana and with all the folks at OPI and with our technology partner as well to bring you, you know, this, this, this new innovative pilot program uh, that will allow us to reshape and, and reframe what testing looks like to students in the future. And we know it's a lot of work up front and we appreciate and we definitely uh, understand that, you know, the burden to, to the field and to the students and to the teachers you know, who are helping pilot this and helping to administer these tests to your students on top of all of the other testing that goes on. But again, the future state and the future goal of this is to help eliminate a lot of that testing and, and hope to be able to replace this with something that's more uh, aligned to, to local scope and sequence to allow for some flexibility and to again build up to an end of year, you know, 
cumulative or summative score at some point. And in order to get there, this is where we need to be with the pilot and how we kick this off and start gathering responses and, and uh, provide information to be able to drive that research and to drive that, uh, that spirit of change. So again, very excited to be working with you, very excited and, and grateful for the opportunity. And uh, again, I appreciate everyone's time here. Julie or um, Cheryl, if you'd like to have any final words. Here we go, Cheryl, go ahead. We really appreciate uh, all of you uh, being with us today and are hopeful that this overview was helpful uh, to you. We know as we get into session two, that you'll have many more questions. And in the meantime, we encourage your IT staff uh, to reach out to Kite Support as you prepare on the te technical side of this work. The um, portal should be open, I believe, for you to be able to get in and play with the uh, test site here. I believe it's opening today, if I recall that accurately. So. Don't hesitate to get in and and explore and play and ask lots of questions. And on that note, have a fabulous rest of your day. We appreciate each of you. <laughs>